Hey, 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 chemistry team, you ready for video number four on our solids and solubility? Oh, sorry if I keep rubbing my face, but my favorite cat's right down here. I keep petting him, he's shedding all over, so I have cat hair constantly all over me. So whenever you see me doing this, I'm going to get the cat hair off me. But anyway, you got to love it, being able to work with your kitty cat. It's always one foot down underneath the computer screen right here. Hello, baby. I love you. All right, we're going to be, look, I got distracted, sorry. I think about working from home, too. I got some cat hair in my eye. All right, we are going to be looking at a pretty simple uh, question, right? Hey, let's say I have a test tube of some volume and concentration of potassium chloride. And I have another test tube with some volume and concentration of, you know, silver nitrate. Then I mix them together. Do I get a precipitate? So you have to look at the ion combinations and go, what could be the possible precipitate? It'd be silver chloride in that case. Check your solubility chart. But just because you mix two solutions doesn't mean you're going to get a precipitate, right? You've got to you got to have a minimum concentration of cation and anion in order for that precipitate to come about, right? It's all based on its KSP value, right? The, the lower the KSP value, the less soluble it is, the more likely it's going to be forming a precipitate. So we're going to do some simple little tricks. I'll show you how to account for that, but uh, we're going to have to do some preliminary calculations. Let's give you the steps. Here we go. So for does a, the question is, does a precipitate form or not? When two solutions are mixed, will a precipitate form? Here's I want you to, to you know, process the information. One, we're going to be mixing two solutions. So if you had my lab, remember the kinetics lab and the activation energy lab where we prepared solution A and solution B, right? And we had to calculate those concentrations via dilution, M1V1 equals M2V2. Then we mixed solution A with solution B. Well, the mixing process increases the total volume, right? So you're going to get a dilution. Mixing two, two solutions Mixing two solutions causes a dilution. Hey, so we're going to have to calculate the new ion concentrations after mixing. This is a dilution process. That's your M1V1 equals M2V2. If your concentrations are in molarity, if you're in something else, just use C1V1 equals C2V2 for concentration. You can do it stoichiometrically if you want to and avoid the dilution equation, but that's a nice little shortcut when you're just changing the volume. No big deal. So that's the first part, a little bit of mathematics. And then we've got the cation concentration and we got the anion concentration. After mixing, this is what they are in this combined container. Maybe we mix them both into an Erlenmeyer flask or beaker or whatever. Step two, set up the equilibrium equation. So think about the combinations of the cations and anions. You're going to get one combination that could potentially form a precipitate, a solid, right? So identify the solids chemical formula. And then you can look that up on the um, KSP table just to confirm that. And write the equilibrium equation for that solid. Uh-oh, one of my kids got to the board. <laughs> There's always these little I love you dads. Where? How did this get here? Okay, let me write. <laughs> All right, so that was an I love you dad for me for my son, not an I love you from me to you. Even though I love my students, you are my academic children. I love you. All right, here we go. Set up the equilibrium equation for the solid that you think could be the possible precipitate. <laughs> Kids are awesome. All right, step three. Remember the reaction quotient to tell you whether a reaction shifts to the right or to the left? We're going to calculate Q, the reaction quotient, QSP, for that equilibrium equation where you've got the, the solid on the left and the ions on the right, correct? Compare Q versus K because you can look up that KSP value on a table, right? If Q is greater than K, right, Q is greater than K, you've got too much, too high a concentration. You've got a super saturated, super saturated solution. It's going to shift back to the left and form the precipitate. It's going to precipitate out. So some of the cations, some of the anions are going to precipitate out and fall out of solution and get trapped into that solid. And you'll have a little bit of these cations and anions left over in the solution that cannot take part in the precipitation process. And then you form an equilibrium of those ions between the solution and the solid itself. So we'll be able to calculate, you know, what the concentrations are of those ions left over in solution. We could do that. Um, but you're just, it's just a simple Q versus K, which is our first step on our equilibrium 
uh, ice table problems, right? So you, this is nothing new, just a little way of thinking about it. If QSP, the, the initial concentrations after dilution, is less than KSP, what they should be at equilibrium, that means they're, they're, there's not a high enough concentration, i.e. it's shifting to the right, it's gonna go right to the ions, you're not gonna get the precipitate. If it shifts left, you're shifting towards the solid, you get a precipitate. So Q less than K, not high enough concentrations, my friend, you're not gonna get a precipitate, right? Uh, if Q is greater than K, you've got more than enough concentration and some of them are gonna combine out, form the, drop into the solid and leave a little bit left floating around. Let's do a couple problems to show you how this is done. All right, here we go. Type of problem you'll see on the homeworks or uh, quiz or test or something. Or a simple one you can do in lab in real life. Will a precipitate of lead 2 iodide solid form after mixing 171 milliliters of a 0.014 molar sodium iodide solution with 231 milliliters of a 0.184 molar lead to perchlorate solution, it looks like. So perchlorates are 100% soluble. Sodium solutions are 100% soluble. So let's think about what we have. We have four ions, right? We're going to have sodium ions, iodide ions, lead to ions, and perchlorate ions. Now, I did tell you I was being nice on this one and put baby powder on you, saying we're looking for the lead to iodide solid. But let's talk about qualitatively if I hadn't told you, if it just said what it would a precipitate form. You wouldn't know what precipitate it is, and that's the first thing you have to do is identify that precipitate so that you can set up the equilibrium reaction. So let's just do a little review here. Always think about what your principal species are, right? So we've got a sodium iodide solution, right? That's going to dissociate to 100% extent, and we have a 0.014 molar solution. Let's do that in a different color. Let's do the 0.014. There we go. So I've got 0.014 molar there. 100%, so I've got sodium and iodide in a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So the ions form will be a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So I'm going to get 1 mole of sodium ions and 1 mole of iodide ions. So let's say I have an uh, Erlenmeyer flask or a beaker with 171 milliliters of the solution, right? Well, that's going to contain sodium ions floating around and iodide ions floating around, right? We're assuming no interactions, interionic, you know, uh, interactions, that kind of stuff. Oh, where'd my red pen go? So if that's a one-to-one -one ratio, my sodium ion concentration would be 0.014 molar, and my iodide would also be 0.014 molar. So now I've identified in that solution the concentration of each ion and what ions there are. Let's do that for the second solution. Can think of this as solution A, and then the lead to perchlorate is solution B. Let's do the same thing for lead to perchlorate. If you can pause it and do it on your own, that would be extra special. So let's take my lead to perchlorate solution. If you look on your solubility table, your solubility charts, you'll find perchlorates are 100% soluble. They don't form precipitate. So I've got, this has lead, the lead two ions in a one to two ratio with the perchlorate ions. So one mole of this will break apart into one mole of the lead two ions and two moles of the perchlorate ions. So let's do that. Let's draw the lead two ion, one of that. And then the subscript for the perchlorate comes over and becomes the coefficient. If you don't know your polyatomic ions, oh, naughty, naughty. Here we go. This was 0.184 molar, okay? Since the lead two ions are in a one to one mole ratio with it, it would be 0.184 molar for the lead two ions as well, 100%, right? There's no equilibrium going on. Uh, we're gonna get twice that for the perchlorate. So I'm gonna take two times 0.184. Not you don't have to write that. You can just take 0.184 times two and write that stupid number there. But let's ponder what's going on here. Right. Sodium ions, but lead two ions aren't going to interact, right? That's not going to happen. They're both cations. The iodide ions and perchloride ions aren't going to react. They're both anions. So we can wipe out those interactions. So you look at the possibility of the sodium ion 
with the perchlorate ion, but see, sodium ions don't form complex ions, they don't form precipitates, neither do perchlorate, so there's no reaction there. So the only possibility is the lead with the iodide. So the question is, will Pb, lead's a plus two, iodide's a minus one, will the lead to iodide solid form? Okay. Now, in saying that in the problem, I pretty much already did that to you, so you could skip this part. But um, if you can't see this in your head, go ahead and set up these dissociation equations for solution A and solution B to figure out what four ions are present, what are the only two, a cation and anion, that can combine to form a potential precipitate. We don't know if it's going to form or not yet. And you need to get these initial concentrations. These are the concentrations before we mix them, right? After we mix these, these are going to drop because we're diluting them to a larger volume using the M1V1. So now we can go to step one. Now we've done this kind of mentally. Let's go step one. Let's, cal let's use the dilution equation to calculate the concentrations of the lead, on, <laughs> the lead 2 ion. What is the concentration after mixing the solutions? And what's the concentration of the iodide ion? after we mix the two solutions because you're going to add the 171 milliliters plus the 231 milliliters to get the total volume that we're diluting it to. That's going to be your V2. V2. Ha <laughs> V2. Piece, piece, double piece. All right. So let's do, if you can do that ahead of time, that would be great. So we'll just do this problem for this video. In the next video, we'll do a similar problem, but we'll calculate the completeness of the precipitation where we can actually calculate like the percent of an ion left over versus what it started with. So it's just an extension of this problem. Do the dilutions for me. All right, here we go. So step one, let's calculate the lead two ion concentration after mixing and the I minus concentration after mixing using the dilution equation. Or you could use stoichiometry, that's okay. Either way it works. This is a nice little shortcut I allow. So we're doing the M1V1 equals M2V2. We're trying to solve for the molarity after mixing. So we need the starting molarity, which we just did on the prior board based on the 100% dissociation the starting volume, which was given to you in the problem, and V2 is the volume after you mix the two together. So that's going to be the volume of the lead to perchlorate solution and the, plus the volume of the sodium iodide solution. All right, so that was, what, 231 mils? I think that was the lead to perchlorate solution. And uh, what was it, 171? So that's the sodium iodide solution. So if we add those, they're both good to the ones place. So our answer is good to the ones place. Not three sig fig, good to the ones place. Largest absolute uncertainty. So I get, what is that, 402? So that's going to be our V2, right, for both of these. We're going to do two different calculations. Let's do the lead first. All right, let's pop this out. So M2... Let's isolate our variable, so let's divide both sides by M2. So that'll be equal to M1V1 over V2. It doesn't matter what units you have of the volumes as long as they're the same. So they could both be milliliter, both be liter. You don't have to convert them to liters to do it. Just leave them both as milliliters. And the and the and Because if you convert them both to liters, the 1,000 to 1 ratio cancels out in the numerator and the denominator, so it's pointless. Just leave them as milliliters, and those will cancel out. So what was the initial molarity of the PB2 plus that we got. Was that 0.184 molar? And what was the volume, the starting volume before we mixed that? I'm looking at my problem here. Was that 231 milliliters? Right, so it's the starting volume, the starting concentration of the lead 2 ion divided by the final volume after mixing them, right? See how the milliliters cancel out? So that just leaves us molarity. It's a nice little shortcut to the stoichiometry. Three significant figures across the board and everything, so our answer is going to have three significant figures. Okay, so I get 0 0.10573. 0 0.10573. three molar. And that will be the PB2 plus, the lead 2 ion. 0.10573. So that's after mixing, right? So see how that dropped a little bit, right? Because we diluted it by quite a bit. Do If you can pause it, do exactly the same thing for the I minus ion, 
All right, let's do it. Try it. Pause it, do it, and I'll set this up. So let's do the I minus after mixing. Exact same setup, exactly the same. I'll do that in blue. So M2 will be M1 V1 over V2. You do this a lot in the real world. What was the initial molarity of that iodide from the sodium iodide? Was that 0.014 molar? What was the volume of that sodium iodide solution? Was that, uh, that was the 171? The V2 is the same in both scenarios, right? You're adding the 171 plus the 231 milliliters, so that's going to be 402 milliliters in the denominator there. Milliliters will cancel out again. So it's not hard, just tedious. Uh, we got two significant figures, though, oh, in the 0 0.014. So I get 0 0.0059. Good to two significant figures, 0 0.0059. Five, five molar, and that's the I minus. 0 0.005955 molar. All right, so I know the concentrations of my two ions. I can now set up my equilibrium expression. Those are my initial concentrations before any kind of equilibrium occurs. And so I can calculate Q, the reaction quotient, or QSP for this. And then I can look up the KSP value for lead 2 iodide uh, solid on my KSP table. Go ahead and do that. Compare them. Is Q bigger than K or Q, is Q less than K? If Q is bigger than K, we win. A precipitate forms. It shifts towards the solid. If Q is less than K, we lose. No precipitate forms because we're going to shift to the right towards the ions. Give it a shot. Good news? All right. So let's set up the equilibrium equation for this. We've got the lead 2 iodide solid. Potentially, right? That's our potential equilibrium. Let's do this. We got the lead 2 ion. And we got a 2 here for the iodide, so we get 2 I minus. So that's our equilibrium equation. You could also do this problem by flipping this the other way, right? By putting the ions in the left and the solid on the right. Actually, that seems a little more logistical. I'm going to do it this way to keep it in tandem with what the most people do in the textbook does. But for me, I tend to want to reverse this because it's the formation of the solid. But the K value would be the inverse of the KSP that's in your KSP table. So that could be a lot of confusion for people. So we'll just stick with what's being taught, uh, even though I think it's more logical the other way. But, you know, that's beside the point. All right, let's set up our equilibrium expression. So K or Q, right? We're doing Q first, correct? So Q will be the concentration of the lead 2 ion times the concentration of the iodide ion squared. This is initially, right? We'll calculate that, and then we'll look up the KSP value on the chart and just compare them. That's pretty straight. Nothing really new here. You've done all of this, but we've never put it all together. So what was our lead ion concentration? Was that the um, 0 0.10573? And we don't need the, concept of the uh, units for this, right? Technically, we should be using activities, but we're not going to. And the iodide was, what was that, 0 0.0059? Was that a 5-5 five, five? square? we got to square it, right? Because the iodide squared, because we got a 2 in the equilibrium equation. Three significant figures, two significant figures, so we're limited to two significant figures. So Q in this case, you could call this Q or QSP for the solubility product reaction quotient. All right, I get 3.749 times 10 to the negative... Six. Right. We're almost done. Looking up the K value is not challenging. This is what led to iodide. Let's look this value up. All right. So get your trusty, dusty KSP chart. I have no idea because I don't have my glasses on. I can't read things this small. <laughs> led to iodide. F G H I. There it is. So lead to iodide, second one down. There's your PBI2. So 
it. Looks like a 7.1 times 10 to the minus, oh gosh, I can't see that. 7.1 times 10 to the minus nine. Oh, oh, where are my glasses? Yeah, 7.1 times 10 to the minus nine. <laughs> 7.1 times 10 to the minus nine. And that's from the KSP table. Right, that's what it should be at equilibrium. Well, can you see the Q is like three orders of magnitude bigger than the K? Which means we, we have way too much on the right hand side. Q is way too big, so the numerator is too big. We have too, way too many ions, right? An excess number of ions. We have a super saturated solution. So those ions are going to combine together. If Q is greater than K, so that's going to shift left and form the solid. Right? These, they're too high a concentration, so a percentage of those are going to come together, precipitate out to form the solid, and leave a little bit left in solution based on the equilibrium uh, value, the equilibrium constant value. So in the next problem, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to calculate, based on the starting amounts of those ions, how much are left, so what percentage of those are left in solution. And you're going to be stunned at how much of those ions combine together and how little are left in solution. Right? Fun calculate. Well, nerdy fun calculations. <laughs>